What's up guys, it's Joe again. I wanted to make a, a video of how I purchased my car because that's one of the questions that I get asked a lot, like the process of how I purchased a car. Um, the other reason I'm doing this video is one, because of the, that, those, that question that I get asked a lot. Two, because I try to be helpful and uh, hopefully you guys find my video useful to, to buy the car. Because I know there's gonna be a lot of service members coming to Okinawa and trying to do the exact same thing I did. Um, and then the the last reason is because I see a lot of people that don't really want to tell how they got their, their car or don't really want to tell how much money to spend on them when people are asking them uh, those type of questions. I see a lot on Instagram, for example, when people get uh, like a nice set of wheels or something like that and people try to ask uh, specs about the wheels and they never reply because they just don't want to give their information. I'm not trying to be that way. I'm trying to, to uh, make things clear and help, help you guys the best I can. So you guys can do the exact same thing I did. I will definitely go <clears throat> as much detail as I can. I will tell you guys how much money I spend on, on everything. So you guys keep uh, yourselves an idea and, um, and how the process went. My process, I feel for myself, was pretty simple. But I will explain you guys how I did everything. Um, for me, my experience was different. Because like I said, I'm a, a service member session of Nawa. I'm not sure how it would work for people in the States. It would probably be a little bit similar or a different country you try to buy it to. Or people they live in Japan, there are no, you know, nothing to do with the uh, military related stuff. But I hope you guys find it useful. So the way I did it, it's uh, this website. They, you, a lot of people don't know about this website. Um, the person who referred me to this website was uh, a friend who's uh, Japanese. So I did it in the uh, Japanese version of the website, but there is an English version of it. The website, the website name is called Gune. Uh, <clears throat> that's where most of the ships put uh, the cars for sale in there. It's kind of like, you know how they say to use Chrysler or uh, cartrader.com, I think it's called. So this is kind of like the Japanese version of it. So this is a <clears throat> this is how it looks in Japanese. Um, so the way I did it, because like I said, I did my research in Japanese, so they didn't know there was an English version of it. I <laughs> basically Google Translate Skyline, copy pasted it, and then added the, the R34 uh, part to it. But you just, for me, for example, you're looking for a Skyline, of course, you can just put, I was looking for R34, so you put R34, and then you click enter, and that works as well to find the Skyline, right? then you can just click down and for i think this is a four dollar scale and regular car it will give you the asking price for the car itself like how much it will be like after tax and all this stuff it's kind of like a roughly estimate it will tell you what type of car it is uh <clears throat> the year that it was made uh uh kilometers uh the size of the engine and it will tell you over here i believe it's a type of transmission if it's automatic or stick shift you know it will tell you before you open the car it will give you a quick little um it will give you a quick little um information of the car and then i'm gonna i'm gonna look for a for a car that we can actually you know something that we find interesting they will give you some more cars that are mixing their chasers there's the r33 r32 350c but mo it will be mostly referred to skylines most of the time whatever you look for is what you're gonna find so let's say we find this a skyline gtt just quick option right <clears throat> you will click on the car it will show like the pictures that the dealership posts on the car so you can just click through the pictures and it will show you the pictures the information as well here then you go down of course and it will tell you the information more information about the car and then uh, more information about the car. Now the very bottom it will tell you the information of the dealership. Um, so that's how I did and it will give you suggestion more cars. Now we're gonna go to the English version of it because I know you guys, that's what you guys are looking for. That's what you guys will use most likely. So this English version, this is the English version of a different design, same website and different, kind of like different way, different things that the way I set up. So here I specified near a Nissan Skyline. And I put the uh, year that I want because I know that's between the R33 and R34 years. And I didn't specify the price, right? To click search. Then the exact same cars that you saw and the other website will be, because it's the exact same web website, you will be here, right? So actually, this is the leadership that I got my car from inside garage. Um, it's in Osaka. It will tell you the place, the, 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 uh, 
stay there, ship is its own. So let's say we're going down trying to look for a specific car. Let's say somebody wants to buy a four door Scallon R34 GTT, right? So you'll click on the car. I clicked on the car. I looked through the pictures. Like I said, I really liked it, I really enjoyed it. I looked at the asking price. Uh, and then, uh, this is actually my first time going through the English version of it. So I might look a bit confused sometimes. Um, this is a. Uh, the year, the, I think it's the month and the year the car was made, the color, mileage again, uh, no repair history, it tells you all, everything that you need to know about the car, then after that, I'm gonna go look for the dealership to see the they sell the English version of it, oh they don't, oh, well I guess the English version doesn't tell you what the dealership is selling, well I might be missing it somewhere, but, um, let me see if I find what dealership Posted in. Well, it says the the card is here and that and that part of the of Japan. So basically, what I did, I just and the, I'm gonna show you the Japanese one. What I did was at the very bottom, it will tell you the information of the dealership, and then I can't seem to find either. Oh, there it goes. So I think it says one, I believe. So at the very bottom, it will tell you the information of the dealership. I think it's called Top Garage. So you will click on that, and then it will direct you to the, the information of the dealership. So basically, what I did, I just looked up at what 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 was the name of the dealership. In this case, it's Top Garage. Then I went to Google Maps and I searched for the dealership on Google Maps. I clicked on it, found it on on like I found the dealership on Google Maps. Pull out their info. I called the dealership. I asked if they had an English speaker because I don't speak Japanese. They, um, for me, it was a little bit different. They didn't have one on the shop, but they had a guy. They, that's his job. I guess dealerships call him to, uh, to do deals with people that don't that speak English. So um, they told me when I give me somebody who will sell me the car. The guy called me, got a hold of me. He asked me uh, if I was looking for the car that, I, uh, that told him that I was looking for. I said yes. Yeah. So. Um, Basically, when text messages, he asked me to add me in a, an app well called WhatsApp because here in Japan, every text message they charge you, you don't have an iPhone, you don't have like iMessage, so you get charged, I believe. So he asked me if I had WhatsApp, I gave him my, I got the app, and then he started, we started texting back and forth. I asked for more pictures because I didn't want to go base just on the pictures that they posted on the, on the website because they're made in the showroom. Um, I asked for more pictures. I, um, I ask for more information about the car. We start talking about price-wise. Um, something hits up. Um, Japanese don't really negotiate whenever it comes to about money. So whatever the asking price of the car is, most of the time that's what they're gonna sell it to you. They don't really like to argue about oh, how much you know money will the car sell for. They they look at the way of if you don't buy it, somebody else is gonna actually pay the money that I'm asking for. Uh, so I talked to him about it. Uh, we went through the. Um, to the entire um more picture ask for pictures of the cars uh for more pictures of the car you know try to see finding the car had problems or no i asked for a video of the car to make sure the car's on it good and healthy um after that he sent me emails uh with the information of the car uh like the, the text part of it was mostly for us information of the car and quick answers answer and then he will send me emails with the more professional side of it like you know tell, tell me information all the stuff um then he sent me an email with a template saying it was pretty much a receipt saying that uh, what car, what can put the information on the car and how much I was gonna pay for the car and all the stuff. So once we agreed that I was gonna buy the car, he sent me a template that said that I paid fifteen thousand dollars for my car, just my car, just the car itself. Then it was thirteen hundred dollars for shipping. So he added that to the bill. He said that was the car, uh, the asking price of the car up to tax and everything was fifteen thousand dollars. Then, um, then I got, well, pretty much I just bought the car itself. And then I tried, it had a little extra price for the uh, 1300 bucks for the shipment from mainland to Okinawa. And it got shipped to my door. Um, they added that to the receipt. I went to Navy Federal because that's what I got my loan for. I worked into Navy Federal. I gave them that little piece of paper. Then what they did, they went on Gune as well. And then they found, um, they looked for the same car that I was looking for, like different cars. And to see the prices, they saw that my car was about was lower than the average um, Scalin R34 GTT that are they are up there. So they approved my loan. 
And then after I approved my loan, um, they they actually the bank wired the money to the guy. The guy said, "Oh yeah," and the, and the same and the same receipt that he sent me, he sent me his bank information. So we wired the money to the, we send the money to his bank. It took about 24 hours, I think, uh, for the money to actually hit on his bank. Once he got the confirmation that the money was in his bank account, he then started the process. So what he did, he asked, uh, since they were taking care of the shipment themselves, because I told them I prefer it that way, uh, they started getting the shipment process ready. They asked me an address where I would want my car to get dropped off. I sent them the address, um, and then they sent me the papers by mail. So what he did, he sent me the re he sent me a, a copy, a uh, his scan the the title, the receipt saying that I bought the part, the uh, an extra another receipt saying that I bought the car, that I paid for the car, and the car was you know paid for like proof that I actually purchased the car. Um, and then he sent me that, a scan of that, and a scan of the um, of the title of the car on the mail. I mean on, on email, and then he sent me the original ones on the mail. So um, I got the car fixed. I was supposed to get the papers first, then the car, but the car actually came in first. So I got the uh, the car took about a week and a half to get here because it took time to find the shipping company. Then the car got here to. Um, to the delivery to actually to my barracks because I live in the barracks to my barracks room and got delivered there uh, a quick tip something I didn't do because the delivery during working hours uh, make sure you look pretty closely at the pictures that they send you of the car so when the car gets delivered to you you can take a walk around the car and make sure there is no damage to the car because my car came with a little bit of damage on the bumpers uh, I'm not sure if something I didn't catch on the pictures because I keep looking at the pictures but you know they have they were in a showroom with a lot of light, so it's hard to see it because my car is white. Um, I don't know if the car was like that or it happened while the shipping, while the car got here. But I mean, that was just a small little scrubs and, you know, dance that the car had. Um, I wasn't too worried about it. And then they came and dropped off the car. You walk around the car, you make sure the car is fine. You sign the paper, then they give you a copy of it. Then the car, the, you know, that the company is on. I received the car. Then the next day, I got the 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 title in the mail and it's it's cool because like the guy the guy was supposed to drop the car to the main gate or the old base but as a guy if i get him a base pass will he be able to get the car to me inside of base he said yes so i was like bet he took inside of base and they, it was funny because the actual papers it got delivered to my door like my barracks door the guy walked inside my building went all the way to my room and knocked on my door and he was like here's your paper like that was pretty was, to me it was pretty amazing that he went all the way inside my to my door and, to not to, cause usually they will deliver it to the from the, the the front of the barracks, you know. So once I got that paper, again this is where the mostly for the members are stationed in Okinawa. I went to once I got the title and everything, I went to the insurance company. I paid for my insurance, which was about six or seven hundred dollars a year for an entire year. But I only what I only got I didn't get full coverage. I just got um probability or whatever it's called. Um, but full coverage was an extra like 400 bucks for a full year. So I got $600 for that. I paid for my JCI insurance, which was I believe 160. And then, uh, then after I paid off for all that, so my car was insured and everything, I went to the um, uh, vehicle registration center. I call it the, I call it the military DMV here of Camp Foster. Um, I applied for temporary plates that day and I got the templates the next day. You have to play them, apply for them for the next prior and then you will get them the next day. I went and picked out the templates the next day. I put them on the car. Then I came to my process for JCI. I already had the receipt where it says that I paid for insurance with JCI. And then I went in and I paid 25 bucks. I got paid the 25 bucks in the back. That was a cash uh, dollar only, I believe. And then they did the inspection for my car. Um, I had to go take some stuff with inspection. The inspection is some, uh, they're pretty strict about the inspection, so it took me about two days to pass it. Once I passed the inspection, that I got the paper passport. Oh, I paid for the weight tax too inside of the building, uh, research center, so I paid for the weight tax. Um, and then I had to go pay again, because my car apparently was wider, longer, and lower than the than it says of the title, because I go based on the, on the measurements that the title has. So I had to go inside, pay 20 bucks for a title adjustment, and then that got fixed. Then once I passed JCI and they give the paper that you pass, I went to the LTO, which is kind of like the actual DMV for the uh, for the Japanese um, for here in Okinawa. So I went there, I went to the back, the car got weighted, and then 
and just to make sure my car waited well what the title said i think the car got weighted uh make sure you guys take everything out of the car so you guys only so the car weight the less as, as much as the car the less the car weighs the better you know then i went back inside and then i had to this the, it's like it's a process you will know once you get there they, they will tell you where to go every window then you go from window to window they'll tell you oh, go next window the next window then after that i went back to pay my pro tax came back I uh, paid for my plates and everything, they renewed my title in there, they gave my title with my actual information on it. Then I went to the next window and I paid and I got my actual plates. Uh, so like I said, it's a process, they will, you will, they will send you to the, to the window you need to go. So you won't get lost. There's a specific window that says uh, sofa, license, sofa license only or service members only. And then that's when they will help you out and they'll tell you where to go to get your stuff done. When, when you go to the LTO, you, you, you won't get lost. And then... Um, after I got my, my plates issued to me, you go to the back uh, and have a little tool to be able to put the plates on because I didn't have any. So some like um, local national actually helped me put my plates on. I put my plates on that you get on a little line and then they do the final inspection where they just make sure the pin numbers for your car match and then they make sure they, that your plates were put on correctly and then they put the little seal thing and they got some on the plates. Then after that, you know, you are set, your JCI pass, the car's registered. Um, and and you're ready to go the only thing i had to do was drive all the way back to foster to the vehicle research center and then i showed them they you know my whole jci was on my process was on i passed everything had my plates and then they gave me two little stickers the sticker for the uh the sticker for the base registration i believe the only military members get so a small little circle sticker that goes on your windshield and i got the sticker the sticker for the uh pro tax that you got to pay every april i believe so I paid for that. I had two stickers on and I was, uh, they gave my, uh, oh, they had to ask them to register your car on base. So once I got that, I, might, I got my vehicle registration done on base and I had my, all my paperwork. And then after that, I was good to go. So like I said, I paid, that was a quick little process. So I don't make the video too long. But the car itself was 1500 bucks. I paid 1300 bucks for the uh, shipping to my door. Then I paid, um, for insurance, JCI, JCI insurance, road tax, weight tax, plates, templates, and all that stuff, I probably wasted around 1500 bucks maybe. So the car in total was about 16, 17, like close to $18,000, but that's included insurance, registration, and everything. The car itself, just the car, was $15,000. And it's a 1998 Nissan Skyland GTT or GT. GTS 25T um, and that's it that's hopefully this video was actually helpful um, I was trying to make this video 10 minutes but I talked a lot because I take my time but hopefully with this process you guys actually got a better understanding of how kind of like it works uh, to get the car to get a, to get a car from mainland and if, I mean if you live in Okinawa and you find the car in a dealership in Okinawa the process is way easier because you go to the dealership you look to the car in person you buy the car and then they will themselves. Sometimes they will do the JCI themselves. They will do the JCI, it's just a little bit expensive, but they will give you the car back with a white plate, as far as I know. But hopefully you guys found this video useful. Um, I will try to make more videos about like, you know, car cruises and working on my car. It's just, I've been too busy and uh, I wanted to make this video because that's one of the questions that I get asked a lot. See you guys later in a different video.